Welcome to the Ledge Podcast. Helping students to lead on the edge. And we are your hosts, Carlin Freiberger and Randy Rasco. Howdy, y'all. This is episode four, and today we'll be discussing leadership styles. So leaders influence and motivate others to reach a common goal. It's important to understand how you react and how others perceive your reaction to conflict, stress, and success. And it's incredibly valuable to you as a leader. Your style defines your values and your perspectives. So let's talk about the four styles of leadership. Let's start with transformational leaders. Transformational leaders are those that seek to change the businesses or the groups of the people that they lead in whatever capacity that may be. When we think about transformational leaders, we need to think about leaders that have truly changed the way we live as a society. Who's a leader you know who has transformed whatever group you're in, if that's your class, or it could be your group of friends, it could be a club or organization that you belong to. These are the kinds of leaders who go above and beyond. They want their people to be taking risks because they know that a lot of times with a big risk comes a big reward. Who can we think of that exhibits these personalities? Like Steve Jobs? That's right. So Steve Jobs. So we wouldn't have, trust me, I remember the old phones that we had. Um, I had the Nokia (laughs) brick phone for anyone who was born in the 80s and didn't get their first cell phone until they were in college. I know, kids. I'll pause for a gasp. Okay, let's move on. (laughs) So... The phones that we have now can do everything. Phones just used to make a phone call. Now you can, that's almost the last thing we use a phone for now. That's true. We're texting, we're video chatting, we're playing games, we're doing business, checking emails. It's, it's setting alarms. Incredible. Setting alarms, setting reminders, putting things in a calendar. Nothing that I would have thought at 22 years old when I got my first cell phone, quote unquote, a phone would be able to do. There are other people in the field who have advanced the telephone in their own way. But I think we can all agree Steve Jobs is one that said, hey, let's take this and and turn it on its head and bring the ideas. Yeah. Transformational leaders are those who promote change and they look for innovation. They look for the risk taking. They look for challenging the status quo. What can you do to make more money? What can you do to engage people more? What can you do to get more attention? That's the kind of thing you look for in a transformational leader. So the next type of leader that we're going to talk about is democratic leaders. Democratic leaders look to share the responsibility of leadership, and that doesn't mean they're not making decisions. That means that they're emphasizing that you work together and you actively involve other people in the decision-making process. For those of you who are listening who were alive in the the 80s, you may have remembered a little man called He-Man. And if you're not... We're going to tell you about He-Man today. He was very much a democratic leader. So he was this prince of power who was trying to save the land of Eternia through magic. He led through asking for feedback. He led through working together with the people he was leading because he can't be a one-man army. I mean, he was he was pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. He was powerful. He was very powerful. He was the prince of power. He got that sword. He got the sword. He had a half a sword. He could have chosen to make all the decisions on his own, and he could have gone forth with that. But he wanted to be open to new ideas. He was okay with hearing those ideas as long as they worked in conjunction with the ultimate goal, right, which is to save the land of Eternia. When we think about a democratic leader, you're thinking about those who take other people's perspectives into account. They value those who are following them or who they're leading. They respect those people, and they understand that they have something to bring to the table, and they use those opinions and those insights to further the common goal. Right. So democratic leaders look for feedback, and in order to do that, as a leader, you have to trust the people you're working with. On top of that, if you're a democratic leader, you better have really good listening skills. And not just listening to wait your turn, but listening to hear what your followers are trying to tell you for feedback in order to reach that common goal. So the next type of leader 
that we're discussing is the autocratic leader. This is the leader who sees themselves as having absolute power. And they may have absolute power, but they really lean into that absolute power and make decisions on behalf of everyone else and feel that their decisions are what's best, that they know better for others that others know for themselves and that they know better how to solve all problems by themselves than they would if they had any input. First, let's let's look at autocratic as kind of the dictators. You know, that's the extreme for autocratic leaders, but the right. dictators like Hitler. Classic autocratic leader. He made the ultimate decisions. He was charismatic. People followed him, but he was making the ultimate decisions with very little I'm sure, input from people around him. He-Man's nemesis is Skeletor. Skeletor is mostly evil. He has the other half of the sort of power. So He-Man has one half, Skeletor has the other, and they're trying to unlock the power of Grayskull Mountain, which contains all the magic in Eternia. Skeletor leads in a different way. He has minions, and he dictates to the minions how they're supposed to act. He tells them what to do. When the minions try to give feedback, he doesn't listen to them. The minions start to resent him. They do what they're told out of mostly fear. He's actually pretty rude to them. Like, he is. He calls, he calls them, them names. names. Yeah. I don't think any of us are really striving for that Hitler adjacent position of Skeletor, but that is a type of leader that exists and it's important to know how to work with that leader. I will say that in a crisis, autocratic leaders take control and lead, and that's a good thing. Autocratic leadership isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not evil. It can be used in certain circumstances if there's an emergency, if there's a natural disaster. You want somebody calling the shots immediately so that you can take action. That's when autocratic leadership is actually really positive, but there's a time and a place for it. I see it as a companion piece to other types of leadership absolutely like it's something that you occasionally have to use and when you have to use it or you need to use it it's it's great to have it i feel like you only pull that out when you need it absolutely um all right the last type of leadership we're going to talk about today is called laissez-faire leaders they provide necessary tools and resources and then they step back and let the team take control of the situation and how they're going to play it out but it's kind of a hands-off sort of leadership they're looking for the team members to make decisions, to solve problems, and to get their work accomplished in whatever manner that they need. This is really good for groups that are like a well-oiled machine, that everyone knows their place, everyone has their job, that they work together well. Teammates support each other almost automatically. The leader doesn't have to do a whole lot, except kind of put the resources and the supports in place to get the job done. And so when I think about laissez-faire, I think about a principal that I had once who I think really embodied this type of leadership and was very supportive in anything that I wanted to do, but then would back off and let me do it. That can be a good thing and that can sometimes, you know, not be so good. You can do it if you can do it. So you can do it if it doesn't require me to be a big part of it. And in that particular situation, and for me, it worked. I can see someone who needs a little more support and a little more structure and guidance, not being excited about that type of leadership. Right. But again, I think it has its place and its time. With democratic leaders, they can take too long listening to every single person's opinion and nothing gets decided. With transformational, you can take way too many risks, not rein any of it in and go bankrupt. I mean, there's good and bad to all. Absolutely. But I think laissez-faire works well with people who are self-starters, who can see the big picture and work backward and who just need some support, kind of like a go-ahead. And permission. And permission, right. right. You know, because when you're following someone, you are essentially getting permission that you think will further the common goal, which in education is obviously educating students. And now it's time to play Leadership Wordplay. We're going to roll the dice, choose a letter. Then we are going to come up with as many leadership-related words that start with that letter. So we encourage you to play along, get a piece of paper and pencil, and let's get started. So our letter today is going to be the letter C. We're going to start time in three, two, one, go.
time's up. Brandy, what do you have? I came up with several this week. I came up with crazy, because sometimes being a leader can get a little bit crazy. They're very busy all the time. Uh, we said charismatic earlier. I think they're cool, calm, and collected. Mm -hmm. I broke that apart into three words. They're crafty. Not, not crafty like arts and crafts. Not arts and crafts, but they're crafty because a lot of times they have to make something out of nothing. You know, you don't always have the budget you need. You don't always have the people you need. And so you have to Frankenstein some stuff together. MacGyver to, it. To make it work. MacGyver it. Yeah, exactly. Crafty. Uh, and sometimes they're cranky. And fair enough. Being a leader is a lot of stress. All right. So I had courageous, a can-do attitude. They have to be able to capitalize on opportunities. They have to consider opinions and look at feedback. They have to communicate effectively. Having conscious thought, being able to think things through, being critical, being creative. And my last word is crikey. <laughs> crikey. Is that just an expression they it's, say sometimes it's when they an get expression. overwhelmed? Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We'll allow it. All right. So we hope you enjoyed playing Leadership Wordplay. When you're aware of your own strengths and weaknesses, that's called self-awareness. When you have that self-awareness and you can pull out these different leadership styles in different circumstances, you'll be a really super effective leader because you're not just using one style to get the job done, to meet those goals. Self-aware leaders are more effective and they tend to be more proactive, which means they take action rather than reactive, which is just fixing problems or putting out fires. We challenge you, how well do you know your own strengths and weaknesses? And can you identify when you've used each of these leadership styles? We'll see you next time on The Ledge.